You've got here a loaded car is at rest on an inclined track. The gross weight of the car and its load is 5,500 pounds. And it is applied at the point G here. I've applied acting uh, 5,500 pounds. The car is held in the position uh, in, in position by the cable. Ah, that's the cable. Determine the tension in the cable and the reaction at each pair of wheels. Okay, so let us have a look at the diagram and see how many active and reactive forces we've got. So we've got the weight as acting downwards. So that is the one of the active forces we've got. This is a cable. So I've got another reactive force here, active force here. Am I right? The tension. Yes, sir. Am I right? Sir, it will opposite the direction. direction. Yes, the cable, you cannot push the cable. It always, it's always in pull. So that's, that has to be there. I can do it in this direction, do the calculation, but come on, common sense. Okay, so I've got my two, react uh, two active forces. Now, Reactive force. Wheels can rotate. Yes, I can rotate both the wheels, so there won't be any reactive moment. Can I lift the car? The, 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 the car? Yes, I can do that. Can I move the car downwards? No, I cannot. So I will have two reactive to be perpendicular. Am I right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so. Now, uh, let us uh, see the free body diagram for this one. We will have two active and two reactive forces. So come on, where is the free, give me the free body diagram for this one. Ah, here it is. So instead of having G downward, because knowing the, the, the angles, uh, the angle given, just, just a second. Yes, angle is given, 25 degrees. Yes, so uh, that uh, it's been split into two components. Now, a bit of common sense has been used here. I can, remember, I can have my axis like this one, X and Y. It means I would have to split my T into two components. Watch this one and this one. I would have needed to split my reaction into two components. That's this one and this one. Same with this one and this one. Uh, whereas for the G, I did not need, I do not need to split it. But I had to split the three forces uh, into components. Or I can have my axis in this direction, Y and X. In this case, I would only need to split the downward force. Sorry, uh, the downward force. Uh, the downward force into two components, that's this one and this one. It's your call. You can go for this kind of axis or you can go for this axis. So as I mentioned in most of my, uh, the examples, you get your axis and then you don't change it and then you put all, you apply equation of equilibrium. So it's a bit of common sense here. You can, you can use this one, but you have to do a bit more work. 